In this tutorial, I'll present a brief overview of the tools in the CarveWrite 2D Drawing Suite. The 2D Drawing Suite is an optional add-on module to the standard CarveWrite Project Designer software that was included with your machine. The 2D Drawing Suite adds enhanced capabilities for drawing shapes and lines when creating project layouts. There are five primary tools included in the 2D Drawing Suite. The Offset Path Tool, the Trim Tool, the Smart Spline Drawing Tool, the Copy Offset Tool, and finally the Import Tracing Image Function Tool. The names of each of these new tools really gives us a clue what they are used for, but it may be helpful to demonstrate what each one actually does. So let's begin by opening the designer software and turning off the board texture as well as a perspective view so that we can see the layout a little more clearly. We'll start with the offset path tool and we'll just uh, draw a rectangle and we can use this copy offset tool to offset the path either to the inside or the outside depending on if we flip this inside or outside. You got some options here. Right now we've got on the corner option so we see this a nice sharp corner following the shape of our rectangle. We also have a couple other options here where we can create a bevel which will camfer these corners and also a radius which will make it uh, very easy now to create uh, rounded corner uh, rectangle shapes. So if we wanted to keep that, uh, maybe perhaps that would be a, a picture frame or um, some sort of a small photo frame, uh, whatever you like. So that's uh, one useful application of the offset tool. Now if we wanted to, we could actually flip the offset as well and we could flip that uh, either inside or uh, the outside. You can see we could just keep doing this until we're happy. And so if you want to create a nice uh, border here, you could use that to create an outline for a carved region or a raised area. Let's just delete this and we could use this to assign maybe a specialty bit. Let's say that we want to um, use one of our decorative bits from the carve right decorative bit set and let's just pick a half inch classical and we'll just keep the defaults here and so we can make a nice uh, neat border. We can also assign a cut path to this to cut it out and if we'd like we can hide this cut out so we can see what it would look like. So you can make a serving tray or a border uh, for a picture frame or what have you just using the uh, path offset tool and the bit assignments. Okay. Okay, I'll shift gears here a little bit and um, I'll show you another uh, use for the offset path tool. For this example, we'll make a child's nameplate for perhaps their bedroom door and we'll just say this child's name is uh, Jody. So I'll put the text on the board and what I want to do here is to create sort of a offset to give this sort of a setting this name within a, a cloud so to speak and we'll use the um, uh, outline tool and create an outline around this text and once we have that we'll select the offset tool get this out of the way and you can see here it's generated a um, and an offset path around each one of these letters and they're overlapping and that's okay and it looks alright right now but I'm going to go ahead and click uh, radius just to make it a little more rounded and let's cut this down to uh, half an inch okay alright so now we have this sort of a, a border shape uh, around this and we're going to hide our original name there and uh, I'm going to select all of these vectors and create a carve region. Let's make that uh, eighth of an inch deep. Okay, so now we have our clouds here. Let's unhide the word Jody. And I'm going to change the uh, word Jody to um, an outline style and I'll use the conform vectors and so you see right away we've we've uh, created this interesting uh, sort of a door plaque 
However, we're not done yet. What I need to do actually is select all of these overlapping vectors I've created a carve region for and actually make a pattern out of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and uh, group them and right click on the word group. It's not necessary to select all these. If you select the group uh, you have the make pattern feature available to you. So make pattern and we'll just make this, uh, we'll put it in make pattern test. I'll name this uh, Jody background and save it. Okay. At this point I can actually delete all of these. Let's get rid of that and we'll open up our pattern and select the Jody background, drag it on the board and there we have it. Now this has a feather around it but if you don't want the feather just uh, go up here remove the feather and perhaps we want to make this a, a cutout. We use the outline tool, uh, select our cut path tool, flip the cut so it's on the outside, accept it, and if we like we can uh, uh, hide this uh, cut path so we can see what it looks like after it's been cut out. Okay, so a very quick and easy way to do a children's uh, name plaque for their door. All right. Next up is the uh, trim tool. And for this, let me just turn on my snap to grid function. And I'll view the grid. And I'll just draw some vectors. And this is going to show us just a couple quick examples how the trim tool could be used. I'll just draw a rectangle here. And let me draw a couple of arcs. In fact, I'll just draw it with the draw line with a smart spline tool. You could draw draw this with uh, the standard line tool if you wanted to. And I'm just going to create a couple of arcs here. Okay, let me end that. And I'll go to my change form tool. I can either uh, click on the icon to change to uh, the arc. Or I can simply right click on the selected vector, change the form to an arc. And let me just make both of these arcs. Okay, and that's flipping the wrong direction, so I'll just drag it down. And I'll adjust this and drag it down. Okay, now to use the trim tool, uh, first of all, you need to select all the vectors that you're going to be trimming against. So I've done that. Select my arc, or my uh, trim tool and I can proceed to go ahead and trim these extra vectors that I don't need. There we go. And so you, you can see you can create all kinds of interesting shapes using the uh, trim tool. Now one thing I should point out is that the trim tool will not trim circles or ellipses. However, uh, if you draw uh, circles or ellipse uh, shapes with the arc tool, then those are trimmable. So let me just give you a quick example of that. Let me zoom in on my board here and I'll just uh, press the letter A on my keyboard to go into the arc drawing tool and let's say that we want to have a three inch circle so uh, there's arc number one hit the letter A, go in the arc tool again and I'm joining it to the node of the other arc. Okay so I've got my uh, circle, it's really just arcs and now I can draw whatever shape I want to against that and um, be able to trim it. Okay, I'll just draw some sort of a random shape here. All right, And select them all and now I can trim against this shape here. just select this and delete it. So okay, uh, that'll give you a uh, workaround for the uh, trimming against a circle or an ellipse uh, until they add that feature in a future version. Okay, let me just uh, give you another quick example of perhaps a, a useful application for this. I'll draw another rectangle here and then I'll select our connected lines tool 
and I'll just draw a arrow shape. Of course I could just draw this shape by itself as one continuous enclosed vector, but uh, we'll keep it simple for this example. Okay, now let's make sure that's connected. It is. All right, let me select all of these to be trimming against. Select my trim tool and proceed to cut out all of the vectors I no longer need. So, so there you have it. That's the trim tool. All right, let me show you the uh, new smart spline tool, drawing tool. And that would be this tool here. And um, it works very similarly to drawing tools found in professional graphics programs. And it allows you to draw sharp node vector points as well as tangent node or smooth node vector points all in one tool on the fly. And to demonstrate this, I'll first show you just drawing a simple uh, uh, shape here. So I click on the board with my left mouse and let go. And I go to the second point where I want to lay down a node and I click with the left mouse and hold. And You'll see what happens. When, when I click and hold down, I have this tangent node that allows me to add some curvature here. Okay, so I'm going to leave that node there and I'm going to click with my left mouse button and hold once more and that will give me that tangent node again and then I'll click and let go and by clicking and letting go you see this node is red and that means that's a free node or a node that I can make a sharp point on. For this particular shape, I only need to draw half of this. So to end getting uh, out of the, ten the Smart Spline tool, just simply right click and click on End Tool, and that gets you out of the drawing tool. Now at this point, we can move these nodes around until we get the shape that we're happy with. Just edit and tweak the shape as you like and I imagine you can tell what this is going to be. You can see I can adjust these blue handles and adjust the curvature of this shape pretty much any way I want to and it's tangent so it's adjusting the curve on either side of this tangent node. Now by the way to change the characteristic of a node you can right click on the node and you'll see that it has uh, an intersect menu item. Right now we can see this tangent and we could change that to free. Now if I change it to free, this node turns red. I'm going to change it back to tangent. Oh, before I do that, let me just show you. If it's a, a free node, then these blue handles can work independently from each other. Okay, and uh, I want this to be smooth, so I want that to be changed back to a tangent node. Okay, and I'll just uh, retweak this out a little bit. At this point I think what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this half and I can either go into right click and click on copy. And I also want to flip this shape horizontally. So we've only drawn half of our shape we'll just flip this horizontally. Control Alt H is the shortcut. And uh, let me just grab this and, well, let me paste in the uh, copy that we made so that we have our original shape. Okay, and we can grab this one that's the left hand side, slide it over, sort of position that, select both of these, and then we'll just move the top and bottom nodes so it's connected together. So now we have a connected shape. So, there's our heart shape drawn with the Smart Spline tool. Okay, here's another example of using the Smart Spline tool to just draw freeform shapes. So I've selected my tool and I'll just draw a simple shape here. Click on this to make it a uh, free node. Continue on and 
stop it there. Okay. And let me draw another one on this side. I could mirror this, but uh, it's just as easy to draw another shape here. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Okay. So we've got a couple shapes here. Uh, if you want to, you can go in and tweak these out a little bit. Let me just zoom in some. You want to be sure that these uh, that vectors don't overlap when you draw them. So if you had something you know like this where it's crossed over, you don't want that. You want to keep these from crossing over. So just thought I'd show you that. Okay, and let me draw another shape here. move this a little more towards the middle. Okay. And I'll draw a few more shapes. All I'm doing here is just drawing some simple curves. And I think I'll draw just a couple more here. Okay. And let me just arrange this a little bit. I think you can kind of see what this is attempting to become. All right, let me select all of these vectors. And I'm going to go up here and just assign the select depth profile. Some of you may already be familiar with this, but it, on the left-hand side we have uh, V-bit v -bit depth profiles. It uses the 90 degree half inch, 90-degree uh, bit. On the right-hand side it uses a uh, ball nose bit. I'm going to use the V-bit with the points at either end and assign that a depth of uh, one-tenth of an inch. And we can tweak these out a little bit. So you can have a lot of fun with the Smart Spline tools, very similar to what I'm used to in other programs when I'm doing freeform type drawing. And you, as you can see, you can come in and freely edit this however you like. I think I'll make this a little bit longer and curve it out a little bit more. And we'll take off some of this severe curve. Drop this down a little bit. And we'll add a little meat to that. I think I'll position these a little more in the center and move this a little bit. Okay, so it didn't take too long, but we can make ourselves uh, quite a nice little decorative uh, sort of a uh, rose looking plaque here. I can also go in and put in some more vectors if I like, if I want a, a leaf vein, let's say, here. Take another one here. Okay, we'll assign those the same profile. One tenth of an inch. Okay. So you see, we can create some uh, kind of neat, fun designs just using the Smart Spline tool. And it, uh, the Smart Spline tool lends itself to a little more uh, freedom when you're you're drawing here and course you can go back and edit these as you like to tweak it out however you want it to look. So okay, that's a quick example of uh, creating a nice freeform drawing using the Smart Spline tool. Okay I'm going to show you an example of the Copy Offset tool 
and you can copy uh, anything in a, an array horizontally or vertically or both at the same time. Uh, for this example I'll show you how to copy a pattern that I made using the CarveRight uh, 3D Suite tools. First of all I'll uh, turn on my grid here and I have this set at an uh, eighth of an inch grid and I'll just simply draw a square and I'll make that into a carve region and I'm going to make this rather shallow. I'm going to make it one eighth of an inch deep and I'm going to open up my patterns and grab a scale that I created and first thing I'll do is I'm going to remove the feather. There's a feather around it and I don't want that. Okay, Let me turn off the label so we can see things a little more clearly and I'll just position this it's snapping to the grid here and I'm snapping it to the center here and I'll turn out turn off the pattern window and I don't think I need the grid now I'll just turn that off for a second and I'll hit my copy offset tool and I want to just show you a couple things here first of all we have the copy horizontally or copy vertically we can reverse the direction. Right now it'll go from left to right. If we want it to go the opposite direction, right to left, we click reverse. This by default, the spacing is going to be uh, match up with the width of the object that we've selected. So you'll see here the spacing says 1.133 and you see that we have the object selected here and the size of that object is 1.133 wide. Now in this case, uh, it's a scale or a roof shingle or what have you. Uh, I want them to slightly overlap so I'm going to reduce the spacing slightly. In fact I think I'll just make it one inch and I want to copy an array of this object across the board horizontally so I think we'll have room for nine more of those and I'll click OK yeah, and so we've got uh, an array of nine of these copied across the screen, which gives us a total of ten. I'm going to turn on my grid again, just to help me line things up, and I'll zoom in. I'm going to make a copy of this. I could use Control C, and I'll paste it, or I could use Control V. And I don't know if you've noticed, but in this newest version of Designer, uh, the copy and paste uh, the paste copies exactly on top in the same position as the original was and that's the way most of us want it. Prior to this uh, the paste was offset by half an inch to the right and half an inch down and most of us didn't care for that so we uh, requested that the copy paste be exactly on top of the original and then we can move it around like we want to. So okay right now I've, I've got the uh, copy selected because the copy is right on top of the original and I'm just going to position this in the middle of these two shapes. You see I've got my grid line to guide me and I also want to have it sort of um, in the middle top to bottom too. So, so I've got this positioned here and the way this pattern was designed I intentionally designed it so that it was uh, slightly shallower at the top and so I applied the tilt feature in the uh, new 3D tools. So this pattern is, is tapered slightly at the top so that I knew that copying this uh, in an array that this would tuck under the ones that were above it. Okay, so now I want to make a set of these and I'll copy these horizontally, same thing, one inch spacing so they overlap and I'll type in the number nine, click OK and we'll take a look at our board. Let me turn off this grid again. And so we see we've got our, our copies, so we've got the beginnings of uh, scaling here. Now to fill up this board is relatively easy. We can just select everything that's on the board. Control A is the shortcut for that for selecting everything. And I don't want this outer rectangle, so I'll Control Select and that deselects it. Now I want to copy these, but this time instead of going across the board, this shows us what we've already got selected, this time I want to go down the board 
and by default going down is the default you can see here the yellow squares show us it's going to be copied below our originals if we wanted to we could reverse this and it would copy you know above it but in this case we do want it to go below and the spacing is fine because that's the dimensions of both of those um, arrays and and I want them copied exactly that same distance uh, vertically and let's say we want to fill up the board you can see these little yellow uh, squares are all giving us an indication of how, how much that's going to copy. So that's about all I can fit on the board, so I'm going to click OK and wait a moment, and voila, we've got a filled board of shingles. So you could make, uh, you know, perhaps a dollhouse roof or maybe a, use this as a skin on a giant fish or a dragon or something like that. But again, you can copy anything. I don't care if it's. Uh, you know squares or carve regions or drill holes or what have you you can now copy using the copy offset uh, in an array horizontally or vertically or both at the same time so that's the copy offset tool alright finally I'll show you the uh, import trace image function this is a very powerful feature that's been added to the 2D suite and it actually works really well with the 3D suite if after you trace an image you want to uh, puff the shapes and create dimensional relief uh, carving shapes but in this overview I'm just going to show you how you import an image explain a few things about that and um, what's involved with um, tracing the image and then I'll just do a simple V carve of that image just to give you an idea of what it could be used for even if you don't have the um, 3D package. Okay so to uh, use the import image function go to the file menu go to import and import tracing image. At this point we can uh, tell it to go get the image from a file or if we've copied an image to the clipboard, the Windows or uh, Mac clipboard, you can use that. But in this case, I'll do it from file. And uh, these images are images that I created just by taking a photograph of a placemat. I've got the entire placemat here and just the close up of the grapes and uh, pear image. So I'm going to select the grapes and pear image and uh, click open. Okay, I just need to explain a couple things here. First of all, around this image you see we've got this yellow dotted line. So in this uh, example I'm just going to trace the pear and the leaves and so I don't really need to bring in this whole image so I can resize the dotted line to just enclose the part of the image that I'm interested in tracing. Okay. I don't know if you noticed that, but when I change the size of the window, I'm just going to crop this image, these values down here changed. I want to explain to you that uh, the smallest image size that designer will bring in for an image um, tracing image import is 6 inches by 6 inches. That's the smallest you can get. So if I tr attempted to type in a value smaller, then 6 inches by 6 inches it won't work. So if I type in 5 and hit the tab key you can see that it will not accept any number uh, smaller than 6. There's a reason for this. The minimum image size is uh, preset in the software at 6 inches by 6 inches because in the designer software the way that it works is we're limited to 128 dots per inch or DPI, that's the resolution and we don't want to go any smaller than that because potentially that could create uh, jaggedy edged um, objects especially when you're using this for creating uh, relief carvings uh, using the 3D tools so uh, now uh, conversely the largest image that can be accepted is 14 inches wide or excuse me 14 inches by 24 inches so if I type in 24 inches hit the tab key, it'll automatically fill in that. It's going to give me a minimum, a maximum size of 14 inches. So 14 inches uh, wide for the board and uh, this automatically fills in the correct ratio. So 
This scale feature works in a similar fashion, so as long as you don't type in a number that's going to be smaller than a 6 inch by 6 inch size, then you'll be okay. So let's say I want a scale factor of 2. Let's see what happens. I'll type in 2, hit my tab key, and uh, that was too small. So you see that the program is automatically filling in values that uh, conform to this minimum maximum size. So if I want a scale of, uh, let's say, 10, hit tab, okay, the big, it's going to go to the biggest it can fit and still keep the aspect ratio correct. So let's just go back to uh, the minimum size. I'll type in the number 6, hit tab, and that's what the image size is going to be imported and automatically creates a board that size. Okay, so uh, here we have our image imported and it's blown up in size to conform to that minimum maximum size I just explained. There's a couple things I want to do before I trace this image. One is I need to be sure that my perspective view is turned off and I also need to turn off this toggle auto re-render. So a toggle just means each time you click it, it's going to toggle it either on or off. Right now it's on because it's slightly shaded. So I need to click it and turn that off. What it does is it prevents designer from automatically refreshing every time you make a change on the board. So that could be quite distracting when you're tracing so you don't want to have the auto render turned on while you're tracing. After you're done you can turn it right back on. So that helps us be able to work a little more easily while we're tracing. Now you may be wondering why don't we see a wood grain? Well, the import tracing image function, instead of seeing a wood grain as your board texture, you're seeing the image as the board texture. So just like you can turn on and off the board texture when it's a wood grain on a conventional project, you can do the same thing here. So if I go to my toggle texture icon. If I click it once, it's going to a plain board. So I can turn the image on and off, on and off. So that could be useful for checking to see what, it, what uh, something looks like after you traced it. Okay, with that being said, let me uh, select my Smart Spline tool. You could use any of the drawing tools, but I'm selecting the Smart Spline tool. And I'm going to trace uh, these leaves here. So using the Smart Spline tool, I can add these curves in on the fly. I can also uh, go back in and edit those later if I'm not happy with that. Okay, and I want a point here and a curve here, a little bit of a curve here, curve here, and join that. Okay, and I'll just quickly trace this other leaf. Same thing. I want a curve. curve, curve, and join. Okay, let me just tweak these out, straighten them out a little bit. I'll zoom in some, move my window. Okay, I want this to be a point. Uh, I made a mistake, so I will make it a free point. Now I can adjust this independently. And I'm just straightening this out a bit to conform a little bit more to my image. Okay, same thing here. This is tangent. So I can adjust these curvatures here. And let me move this up a little bit so I get a little better feel for that. And I'm just gradually tweaking out these shapes so it lines up a little bit better with the image. I don't really need all these undulations, but I'll keep them in there just for the sake of this example. Okay. And that's probably close enough. And let me zoom back out. So I've got these uh, two leaves traced. And if I want to just see what the outlines look like by themselves, I can toggle my texture off, which in turn toggles the image off. 
and so I can go back and forth and see what those traces look like. Okay, let me trace the pair real quick. And I'll start here. And I'll make a sort of a curve shape here. Curve here. tweak these out a little bit. You see I'm just moving the nodes around and adjusting the blue handles. I can add more vectors here if I want to. Trick this out some more. And we'll just toggle this on and off. See how that looks. Yeah, I think I'm going to reduce the curvature on this part of the pair just a teeny tad. probably looking pretty good. Okay. Well, let me just draw a couple quick vectors for the, the leaves. Okay. And I'll just add a little curvature to this as well. Actually, I can add a little curve here too if I want to. I'll change that to a spline. And we'll make this a spline also. Okay, we can see how that looks. Alright, at this point, uh, I can create a simple V-carve just by selecting all of these items. Go into my bit assignment and I'll select a V-bit. Let's say we want to use the 60 degree V-bit and we'll cut that at a depth of uh, eighth of an inch, see how that looks. Okay, not bad. So that gives you a real quick uh, way to do a V-carve. This could be carved on a, a plaque or a board or a cutting board or something of that nature and then uh, stained and the uh, darker areas, the recessed areas of the V-carve will retain the darker area of the stain. So it give you a nice contrasting simple V-carve project. Now if this were, if I was demonstrating the 3D tools at this point, uh, we could take each one of these vectors and puff them up. But if I was really wanting to tweak this out for, say, a, a, a V-carve project, I might add some leaf veins here. Okay. And assign those both the uh, V, same V bit. And make that a eighth of an inch. Actually you could even assign these all instead. You could assign these a profile. And let's go with that shape. Let's see what that looks like. I don't like that. I want to reverse it. So I click here, click Reverse Profile, click OK, and that gives me the fatter part of that stem on the top instead of at the bottom like it was. Same thing with these. I'll go ahead and reverse those. Actually, I'll change the shape. I'll make it pointed at both ends. Okay, there we go. Simple V-carve. Uh, all based on uh, tracing of a photo taken from a placemat.